Welcome. Let's take a look at finding the critical points of the function f of theta equals 2 cosine theta plus sine of 2 theta. Now recall that uh, to find the critical points of a function, we have to consider where the derivative of the function equals 0 or where the derivative of the function is undefined. So with that in mind, um, let's go ahead and look at where our function or where our derivative is equal to zero. So first of all, we need to identify our derivative. So f prime of theta equals the derivative of our first term will be 2 times the derivative of cosine, which is negative sine of theta, plus, and then the derivative of sine of 2 theta will be cosine of 2 theta. And then we have to apply the chain rule because the argument is not simply theta, and so the derivative of 2 theta with respect to theta is 2. So the derivative of our function here is negative 2 sine of theta plus 2 cosine of 2 theta. Now, um, first of all, uh, let's look at the easier of our two criteria here. Let's look at f prime of theta is undefined. Now, because this function involves sines and cosines, the derivative of this function is defined for all real numbers. So um, there are no values of theta for which the derivative is undefined. So we can say that f prime of theta is defined for all real numbers. And now we can simply focus our attention on uh, values of theta that cause the derivative to equal zero. So we're focusing our attention there. So we want to know where does negative two sine of theta plus two cosine of two theta equal zero. Now, Solving this equation can be somewhat challenging because, as you'll notice, we have a sine function and a cosine function involved. And so um, it makes it difficult to solve this equation. So what we want to do is to rewrite this equation either in terms of sines or cosines. If we have an equation involving a single trigonometric function, we can then strategize about how to solve that equation. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a trigonometric identity. And you'll notice down here in the corner we have a couple of options for cosine of 2x. Now Cosine of 2 theta could be rewritten as cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. But rewriting cosine 2 theta that way won't solve the issue we're having. We will still have sines and cosines as part of our equation. We could replace cosine of 2 theta with 2 cosine squared theta minus 1. But again, that would give us a mix of sines and cosines in our equation. The best option for replacing the cosine component of that equation is this third option. We can replace uh, cosine of 2 theta with 1 minus 2 times sine squared of theta. And what will happen is our, our equation will now be simply an equation involving sine of theta. So let's go. Our equation becomes negative 2 sine of theta plus 2 times the quantity 1 minus 2 
sine squared of theta. All equals zero. Now let's go ahead and distribute this two and we get negative two sine of theta plus two minus four sine squared of theta equals zero. And now I notice that I have a common factor of two in each of our terms. And I notice that uh, this sine squared term could be a leading term, but it's negative. So what I'm going to do is divide all three terms by negative two, and then rewrite this in descending order. So if I divide all three terms by negative two, my first term becomes simply a positive sine squared. My second term now becomes a minus one. And my third term becomes a plus two coefficient. So what we have now is two sine squared of theta uh, plus one sine of theta minus one equals zero. At this point, we could use the quadratic formula because this is a quadratic equation, or we could simply factor. Now this is a quadratic equation in terms of sine of theta. So I'm going to factor this as two times sine of theta, and then a sine of theta for the first term. And now what I want to do is have my middle, uh, my outside and inside uh, terms add to positive sine theta. So I'm going to put a plus one here and a minus one there and set that equal to zero. If I use the distributive property on this, I will end up with two sine squared theta uh, plus two sine theta minus one sine theta. That will give us our plus one sine theta. And then a negative one times a positive one will give us a minus one. So we have this in factored form. So that means that each of these factors um, must equal zero. So either the first factor has to equal zero or the second factor has to equal zero. Otherwise, the product will not equal zero. So we're looking at values of theta such that two sine of theta minus one equals zero, or we're looking at values of theta such that sine of theta plus one equals zero. Let's look at these separately. So for the first equation, let's go ahead and we will add one to both sides of the equation and the then divide both sides of the equation by two. So we end up with two sine of theta after, equals one after adding one to both sides of the equation. And then after dividing both sides of the equation by two, we end up with sine of theta equals one half. Now, Let's focus our attention um, on this particular equation. Let's go ahead and narrow our focus because there are, are an infinite number of um, values of theta for which the sign is equal to one half. So let's go ahead and focus our attention to the interval from zero to two pi. Then once we have those, we could add two pi to any of them, and we would have all of the possible critical points. So sine of theta equals one half. So there's two places um, at which sine of theta equals one half. Uh, 
That's when theta equals pi over 6 in the first quadrant, if you're thinking about the unit circle. And at theta equals 5 pi over 6, or in the second quadrant, if you're thinking of uh, the unit circle. Our second equation here, sine of theta plus 1. Well, si uh, let's add 1 to both sides of the equation. So we get sine of theta. I'm sorry, we're subtracting 1. So we're or adding a negative 1. In either case, we get sine of theta equals negative 1. And then thinking about the unit circle and where sine of theta would be equal to negative 1. Well, that occurs at only one location in the interval from 0 to 2 pi and that occurs at 3 pi over 2. So what we have here is um, three critical points. So we could say the critical points of f of theta on the interval from 0 to 2 pi are uh, theta equal to pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, and 3 pi over 2. Now that's only the case when we are focused on the interval from 0 to 2 pi. Now, if we wanted the critical points over the entire domain of f of theta, on the entire domain, so on the entire domain of f of theta, the critical points are we would have um, pi over 6 plus multiples of 2 pi, so n times 2 pi. So integer multiples of 2 pi will represent one full rotation around the unit circle. And so you will end up on an angle that will provide um, the same values into uh, the derivative function. It will still produce a zero in the derivative function. We could say that also we have uh, 5 pi over 6 plus n times 2 pi. And we could say that another critical point would be 3 pi over 2. That does not look like 2. 2 uh, plus n times 2 pi. And again, this would represent uh, the critical points on the entire domain of f of theta. I hope you find this helpful.